Let me begin by, by stating the obvious, namely that uh, the, the entire science of the 20th century has been dominated by one, one name and one name only, namely by Albert Einstein. And uh, this dominance has been, of course, for very good reason. Indeed, I have um, often uh, stated in my, my work that um, special relativity as a majestic axiomatic structure as well as a truly impressive body of experimental verification. And uh, <clears throat> so I don't have to remind to my colleagues the, 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 the beauty and validity of special relativity at this time. Also allow me to remind uh, the power of the name Albert Einstein because it can be, um, it, uh, it can be illustrated by, by uh, remembering the, 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 ex the experimental verification of the energy equivalency, the famous equation E equals mc squared, via the atomic bomb. And the, 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 so therefore it is understandable that the entire scientific community has been really dominated by the power of uh, this um, colossal scientist of the, of the 20th century. However, the all energy and fuels that could be identified with Einstein theory were all well known by the middle of the, uh, of the 20th century. And they were known to be environmentally unacceptable or insufficient or had environmental problem because they either released um, harmful radiation or they released harmful radi radioactive waste or for other environmental reasons. So, uh, so it is known by, by technicians, um, uh, experts in the field, that uh, the, the only possibility for mankind to really come up with fundamentally new, clean energy and fuels, the only possibility is to surpass Einstein theory. If we remain stagnant in the 20th century theory, then as we will see, that, that we can really endanger the future, uh, the future of our planet. As we'll enter in the, uh, today in a, in a conceptual basis and then in the, uh, the following level by also by a pre presentation by other scientists, you will see this the concrete illustration of this statement by, uh, by, uh, by um, quantitative treatment and experiments. So we have um, a scientific um, duty to address uh, the special relativity in an objective way. And the only objective way is essentially the following. We have to identify the conditions under which special relativity is exactly valid. And uh, secondly, we have to identify the condition under which the special relativity is only approximately valid. Because any theory, no matter how beautiful it is at a given time, every theory has limitations. This is extremely well known throughout the history of mankind, and it is also the fate of special relativity. Einstein himself says that Galileo Galilei, Galilei relativity is valid at low speed, so it has limitation. At higher speed, my theory, Einstein said, is better. But the fate of this limitation now um, falls on, uh, on Einstein himself. It is our duty to identify those conditions in which the special relativity is only approximately valid. And finally, we, um, we have to identify conditions under which uh, the, the special relativity is inapplicable. Namely, those conditions are so far away from the condition of the original conception of special relativity that there is no science that the scientific process that you can extract no matter how you introduce into the equation arbitrary function that then you fit from the experimental data and then you claim special relativity to be valid, a process rather often occurred, unfortunately, throughout particle physics and other physics, uh, <coughs> and other physics segments of the second century. So, um, so uh, basically in this lecture what we will do, we will have a conceptual um, presentation of the level one of the aspect one, two, and three, we will review the, the objection. Each of the, those the three are a level of analysis has its own uh, objection. We have, if we want to do a, scient implement scientific democracy, we must, we must review the objection. We will, in all level. And finally, we, it is our ethical duty to present, uh, the, um, or at least briefly indicate, the societal implication of this type of study. Very well, let's, uh, oh, incidentally, all, the, um, all re technical references of, um, uh, of this lecture are available in free PDF download in the adjoining the, uh, doc document that you can just click and then uh, click on, uh, on various links and you have all the references in, uh, in free PDF download. Okay, let's get started then. The, uh, let's uh, begin by identifying the condition of, of exact validity of special relativity. 
the, um, the, this identification is very easy. Uh, and, uh, those conditions are the original conditions stated by Einstein. They were historically called as, as identified as exterior dynamical condition or exterior dynamical problem, and they essentially consist of point particles and electromagnetic waves propagating in empty space, propagating in vacuum. I have to make a sharp dis distinction here between the, the, the original writing by Albert Einstein and the writing by Einstein followers. It's a distinction that I, I have to make several times during this lecture as well as in, in subsequent lecture because if you look at the same condition in Einstein follow, you see difference. You see a universal applicability under whatever condition exists in the universe. And then uh, under, that, those, under the, this type of statement, we essentially exit from a true scientific process and we enter into academia aims essentially. Well, here I have to, I have to present the, the Jovian system as an illustration of the condition of exact validity of special relativity. Because, the, um, because I am of Italian origin and education, I am an American citizen, of course, now, and I'm speaking as an American citizen, and indeed I have an American flag here and uh, I carry it with me very often. And, um, uh, but uh, being of, origin, uh, of Italian origin and education, I had, to do, I had to present the Jovian system because it was first seen by human eye uh, by Galileo, Galilei, who invented the telescope uh, and saw the Jovian system. The Jovian system, of course, not this view, but, um, but he did see, he was the first man who saw a planetary system. Special relativity is ideally suited for, the, um, for an exact representation of planetary system as it is the case for uh, Galilei's relativity. Why? Because the central uh, symmetry of, uh, of uh, special relativity, which is the Poincaré symmetry, or the central symmetry of Galilei relativity, which is the Galilei symmetry, they, uh, they were conceived, developed, and known to apply for Keplerian system. Keplerian system are, are, are a number of, uh, of massive uh, point bodies that orbit around a heavier center, orbit in vacuum, without collision, without collision, careful, orbit in vacuum, without collision, around a heavier center, which is called the Keplerian center. In this case, Jupiter is the Keplerian system of the Jovian system, and the other are essentially uh, planets orbiting around uh, the, 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 the reason, uh, the, the, in any case, is, as I said, is an obvious statement, this, this exact validity, because it is, in, uh, it is important to remember the, and note the unbelievable precision according to which NASA and Russia and uh, China and now Europe, all uh, the, the mankind sends probe at, at billions of kilometers distance, <laughs> uh, distance far away from, from Earth, with an unbelievable precision. This is uh, evidence, indeed, that Galilei relativity, Newtonian mechanics, and special relativity, if we are talking about high speed, then are indeed unbelievably exact. The, the, um, the, um, however, as it is the case for all aspects in, uh, aspect in science, the special relativity has been the subject of very severe criticism since its incep inception in 1915. The, we cannot ignore those, um, otherwise <laughs> we don't implement scientific democracy. We, we, do some the we enter into the theology, essentially, scientific theology. Well, first we should remember that um, uh, as experts in the field knows, are expected to know, to qualify as such, that Michelson Morley, there are a number of papers in referee journal claiming that the Michelson Morley, Morley experiment is, is flawed or incomplete or whatever. So it is an open, still an open issue. Why? Because the, the Michelson-Morley experiment has not been repeated with um, contemporary instrument. And this, the, um, uh, the controversy will persist until that experiment is indeed redone and the issue is settled experimentally rather than by collegial uh, authority, which is uh, de very debatable as a principle. Secondly, the, con the notion of Einstein simultaneity has been uh, the subject uh, of, um, of controversy and continues to be. Um, additionally, I only quote five out of many. Additionally, there, are, there is uh, very credible evidence that the speed of light is not constant for accelerated frames along, um, a, 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 along a straight line. I repeat, speed of light is not expected to be uh, constant for accelerated frames along a straight line. 
which means uh, colleagues cannot jump to general relativity because there is no curvature and any applicability of general relativity and Riemannian geometry will be po essentially political. Finally, I have, I have dedicated myself a, a few years of research when I was at Boston University teaching physics and mathematics at all levels from prep courses all the way to postgraduate seminar courses in advanced applied mathematical topics. I spend, um, I work with Jack Agassi and Paul Roman uh, and uh, ask ourselves the issue, is the Poincaré symmetry the only space-time symmetry in flat, spa uh, flat space or there are alternatives? And the answer, we came up with an alternative which is called, today is called the uh, Agassi, Roman, Santilli, Relativistic Galilei group. It is, uh, the, this was in 1974, <laughs> 30 years and more have passed and of course the issue is, is far from being uh, completed. Indeed, uh, there are a number of very distinguished scientists who are uh, still studying the symmetry. Just to mention a few names, uh, my, my, my friend, um, uh, I'm honored by his friendship, Larry Horwitz at uh, Tel Aviv University, has been seriously looking at this, uh, at this, uh, this symmetry. Um, um, John, uh, John Frank, uh, Funky of the uh, International Association of Relativistic Dynamics has written papers the um, um, Hertz Will Wilhelm and a number of others, um, authors have indeed uh, written papers. But um, here is, however, the important statement of uh, we, we need a rock in which to build all those five levels of scientific, technical, mathematics, physics and chemistry. And our rock is special relativity. So throughout um, uh, all this lecture, at least for my lecture, I will assume special relativity to be exactly valid under the condition stated by Einstein, namely for point particle and electromagnetic waves um, um, propagating in vacuum. In any case, it's a pragmatic, uh, uh, pragmatic um, uh, assumption because it works. We know that the Lorentz symmetry works extremely well with extreme precision in, uh, when we, we have uh, particles are being accelerated in accelerator at CERN, Fermilab and so on. Since it works, that's good enough for us. Any, in any case, all the mathematics and physics and uh, chemistry that we will be working and, and presenting will apply with very little modification to an alternative uh, symmetry that future physicists may identify, such as the Agassi, Roman, Santil, the relativistic Galilei. The, the application is just uh, uh, very, very simple. So from now on, I will assume special relativity to be exactly valid in vacuum. Okay, now let's pass now to the, um, to the, the second important question. Under what condition special relativity is only approximately valid? Or alternatively, do we have sufficient uh, evidence to even consider that special relativity may be approximately valid? Uh, yes, the answer is absolutely yes. There are many. There are, there are, in 50, 50 years, we had an accumulation of mathematical, physical, chemical, experimental, industrial, and other evidence according to which special relativity cannot be valid, cannot be valid for the so-called interior dynamical problem, such as the structure of Jupiter itself. And uh, the, we are talking about what type of system are those? Those are talking about extended, therefore deformable particles that, and electromagnetic waves propagating within a physical medium. Think about light propagating in our atmosphere or think about, uh, or think about, uh, the, uh, about uh, the, con the atoms of Jupiter that they propagate through another medium but and, um, and many, many other systems that are... Uh, the, now, this approximate character of special relativity in, in interior physical, in interior dynamical problem is crucial for the prediction and quantitative treatment of new clean energies and fuels. So therefore, if we ignore a, a scientific analysis of the limitation of special relativity, certainly we can get chairs and all sorts of grants and maybe big prices, but the issue persists. Do we serve really society or we abuse society, society for personal aims? So there is an ethical duty underlining uh, this issue. Uh, 